Good evening this good Friday. As we continue to march our way this holy week to the resurrection and Easter this coming Sunday. Tonight, we will be looking at Luke chapter 23, focusing on the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, I will be leading us tonight in our time of devotion. We are also grateful for Yvonne Sinning and Jane Izzy as they lead us through scripture and prayer. Again, thank you for joining us tonight as we continue our journey this Holy Week. Good morning, Oxford Baptist Church. Today I will be reading Luke 23, 44 through 49. Hear the word of the Lord. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness the sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Church family, as we remember all that Jesus has done for us, all that God has provided for us, let us go to him in prayer. Father God, our hearts are so full this holy week as we look in anticipation to Easter. But this of the most difficult times, this day, the most difficult where we have to look and understand and seek all that you have done for us. The suffering, the loneliness, the insults, the separation from God the Father. All of this you've done for us. And as the temple curtain was torn in two, we no longer have to go through another person to have access to your throne. Father, we're so grateful for all of these things, but we ask that you help us. Help us in this time of worship, scripture, prayer, songs, thanksgiving. Help us to make this the most real Good Friday we've had. May we fully understand all that you have given up for us and all you have done for us. May we be forever grateful as we look to the future. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen.
ground, his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny, no power of hell, no scheme. It's Good Friday, the day in which we remember the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we enter this story, as the disciples and Jesus have left the upper room, knowing that Judas was going to portray Jesus, Jesus decides to go back to the familiar place, the Mount of Olives. Jesus goes to the Mount of Olives, as was his custom, a place of prayer, silent solitude. Jesus goes there knowing that it was the same place just a few days before that people praised his name in Luke 19, but also knowing that Judas could find him there because it was such a sacred and important place to Jesus. It was there in Luke 22 that Jesus was arrested. He's arrested and then dragged and taken before the Sanhedrin, but not before he heals one of the soldiers whose ears were cut off. As the story goes on, we find Jesus before the Sanhedrin, and they're trying to figure out what to do with him. And Peter stands outside, and it is here that Peter denies knowing Jesus three times. As day breaks, Jesus is taken before Pilate and Herod, who seemingly aren't sure if they want much to do with this, but instead they go forward. In unique detail, we find out that they join together in this force, and they offer a choice to the people. You want us to set Jesus free or Barabbas? This choice was one that the people seemingly found easy, that they would choose Barabbas, a criminal, to be set free and not Jesus. Jesus was beaten in these moments as he was persecuted and mocked in the midst of his his, uh, hurt and pain. He is then led to the site of the crucifixion. Simon from Serene is chosen to continue to carry the cross of Jesus because he could not do it himself. He was so weak from the immense persecution that he had already taken. People mourned and wailed for Jesus, it says, on this journey. And and as Jesus Christ is then crucified on the cross, he hung on the cross, he is mocked by the soldiers and those gathered 
with him. But Jesus offers forgiveness in the midst of these moments, forgiveness to those around him, but also forgiveness to the criminal who hangs next to him. As darkness descends upon the story, Jesus exclaims, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And then he dies. The crucifixion of Jesus is an integral part of the story of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I want us to pause tonight and consider the enormity of this story and some of the variables that are going on. And two specific things in this story that I find interesting. And that in many ways we may find ourselves as part of this story. One thing I find in Luke 23, 12, it says very clearly that Herod and Pilate, who once were enemies, find themselves becoming friends in the midst of this evil. As the crucifixion story is told to people, clamor, celebrate, and become friends over an injustice. I wonder how many of us can find ourselves like Herod and Pilate, often celebrating, clamoring over and pushing forth injustices in our world. Or are we just like the others gathered there? Maybe just becoming their friends because they have power. Oh, Herod and Pilate, instruments of evil in the first century, becoming friends over the injustice. And then, yes, then we find in Luke 23, 27, Common, ordinary people, not the people of power, not the priests, women, children, ordinary people, the ones that don't have fame and prestige, are the ones who are actually mourning, wailing over the injustice of the crucifixion of Jesus. Tonight, as we consider the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, maybe it is a a poignant time for us to consider this question. Whose side are we on? The one whom is the oppressor, the one who is in position of power, the one who is doing the persecuting, and killing? Or are we on side of the persecuted? Coming alongside like Simon, the women and the others mourning and wailing because an injustice has occurred. Whose side are you on? The powerful or the powerless. I think the appropriate choice is clear. Jesus died a horrific death. So it all, so all the marginalized, the hurting, the oppressed, and even the powerful could be redeemed by the power of God. May we find ourselves on the side of Jesus. Amen and amen.